everyone. Welcome. How are you all doing tonight? I'm just going to quick do my freshen up my computer, the page, so it comes up that I'm live because I want to make sure I have everything in where it needs to be. Okay, I like that. Okay, well, the, I am doing a series called Fall Friday. Um, I guess I should say, hi, I'm Joyce Whitman. I am stampinscrapper.com. I'm an independent demonstrator for Stampin' Up. I was so excited to get started with my project tonight, I forgot to introduce myself. Um, I have gotten so many wonderful comments and requests on how to make this card. Um, this is how it is when it's standing upright. You can, you're looking down at it, and I'm going to take it, and it sits so you can kind of see like this. This is how it sits. And it's so cute that you could even leave this out for a decoration. And this was my project last week for my Fall Friday series. Um, I think this is my third or fourth year that I've done this. I do it in September and October every Friday. I do a different fall project. It could be a stampin', um, a scrapbook page. It could be a 3D project, a card, just a home decor, any different, many different projects that I do. Well, this time I saw this, I actually got an email um, with this from Split Coast Stampers. And I thought, you know, I haven't made one of those in a long time. So I decided to go ahead and make one. And um, on my card, what I used were the Posted For You stamp set. I used the Happy Bertha here. And then, to, but tonight I'm going to be using Itty Bitty Greetings and I'm going to be using Hope You're Feeling Better. And I also, for the, uh, this, I forgot to grab it. I used, for the decorating the pumpkins and the leaves, I used the Gather Together. And I, um, for the pumpkins here, these two pumpkins I used. And then I used the dies for the Gather Together. I used this leaf here. And then the pumpkins, of course, to cut out those. And um, tonight, I didn't want to waste a lot of your time because we all are, have busy lives. Um, I went ahead and I've already colored them and decorated the panels here. But I will, at the end, show you how I colored one of the pumpkins just so you get an idea of how I did it. Okay, so let's see. I want to make sure everything's set up here perfect. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. So you're going to start, I'm just going to set this off to the side here. Um, I'm actually going to have to move it here to bring out my um, score pad. So what I did is I already went ahead and I already scored this, but I wanted to show you. You're going to cut a piece of paper at eight inches by eight and a half. And you're going to put the eight up at half up at the top. And you're going to score at two. Oh, let me move this up. I don't think you can. Whoops. Nope. Okay, let's try that again. Eight and a half by eight. You're going to score at two, four, six, and eight. And I've also heard these called that kind of card, the two, four, six, eight card. Now, what we're going to do is, let me get out my trimmer, we're going to cut this into three pieces. So on your eight inch side, so your lines are going horizontally that you just scored, you are going to cut a four inch piece. Let me make sure this is down far enough so you can see it. I am so short that I have to um, stand on my tippy toes to look in my camera to make sure you can see it. Okay, so I'm going to cut this at four inches. And then I'm going to cut, you have four inches left, and then you want to cut that at two inches. So you're going to have a four inch piece, a two inch piece, and a two inch piece. And that's it. You're done with your cutting, except for your little squares. And I'll give you those measurements as we go along. One thing you want to do on your tabs here is you are going to want to just miter them just a little bit because they'll fold a little bit easier. So just cut off the little triangle on the end. And it doesn't have to be a lot. It just makes it easier to make our boxes. Oops, I actually like to cut it this way. Okay. All right now I can bring the project back in. Make sure you guys can see that. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're going to start with putting our boxes together. The first thing you wanna do is you wanna burnish these. Now, 
I do mine a little bit different than um, some people do theirs. I do all my panels before I put my boxes together. But one thing I did learn from the Split Coast Stampers um, video that I watched is I really like this. She hid these tabs and I'll show you what I mean here as we make it. So you don't see those when you're looking at the card. And one thing, when you're folding on your score lines to make sure that it lines up, make sure your uh, side is even. Even if your score lines off a little bit, just take your bone folder, go down the center, and then go to your left and to your right, and it'll be perfectly lined up then. Those score, those score lines are just helping in the paper fold because you've already stretched the fibers in it. Okay, we need to put on some tear and tape here. Or you could use, actually, you know, um, we're not going to, you could use tear and tape. And I believe that's what I used on this box. But I'm going to try our new Stampin' Seal Plus on this and see how that holds up. Okay, one thing that I did learn, and what I mean about hiding these tabs, so see my tab on this one, I don't know if you can see, it's here. So when you're looking at the card, you don't see that tab because it's hidden right here on this right behind here. Same thing was with these, they're hidden here on the bottom. So when you're looking at the card, you don't see those tabs right there. I'm like, brilliant, what I never thought about that. I usually put them in the back. I would have done that. So I thought that was a great tip I wanted to pass on to you guys. And another thing she did, which I thought was wonderful. So say, okay, like I said, I'm not putting mine together because I want to decorate mine before I put the boxes together. To me, that was a lot easier. So what, I want this tab towards my front, correct? So that's going to be right, whoops, let's tip it this way. Is that right? Let me double check here. Yes. So we want to go right here. So we want our tab on our left front corner. So we're going to put that right there. So what I want you to do is just put an X right here. What that means is that's where I'm going to be putting this cube. I'm going to put the cube right there. So then I know, okay, this is where I'm going to be working. And that helps with your decorating when you're doing this. Okay, so here are the two small cubes. We want to do the same thing. So we want our tab is going to be in the front. It's going to go up like this. So it's going to be in the front bottom is where our tab is going to be. Because when you're looking at it, you're not going to see that. So the back. So this is our front. You're going to go to the back piece. This is what's going to, it's going to sit like this onto here. So we have this like this. So we're having our, because our tab's on our left front corner, and we're going to make our tab on our front bottom. So we need our X's to go together. So you're going to put an X right here. So you know that's what's going to go up against this. Do the same thing on this one. Your tab's here. Just kind of hold it in place and flip it and put your X on the back. So then you know where you're going to be adhering these together. So we're going to decorate first on most of it. We're not going to get all of it decorated, but we're going to get most of it decorated first. So on your decorating, your little squares. Now, again, you don't need to sit here and watch me tape all these together. So I went ahead and did that. So you're basically, I'm teaching you how to put this little guy together. But these are all cut and you're going to need 12 of these. They're going to cut the early espresso part, the back, the mat, is at seven, one and seven eighths by one and seven eighths. And your designer series paper is one and three fourths by one and three fourths. Now, I have used two different patterns. Let me go plank. Two different patterns on mine. You can make them all the same, whatever you want. It's your card. Like I tell my ladies at class, it's whatever your little heart desires. It's yours. Be creative. Do what you want to do. Okay, so we're going to decorate our big one first. So let's put our little ones off to the side for right now. So we know this is our X, right? This is going to be the front of our box. So this is going to be right here. We're going to work on the front here first. So we know 
This is the big box. This is the little cubes. So we're gonna put these two pieces on first. The first one, so we're gonna lay this out and your tab should be on your right. On your left hand piece with the X on it, we're gonna put the one that I put the ribbon on. And again, I am going to use my um, Stampin' Seal Plus this time. I just wanna see how it works. It's supposed to be as strong as our Fast Fuse that we used to have. So I thought, let's try it on this project and see if it works. So that's what I'm gonna to use tonight. Okay, so because I have the smaller paper, my smaller um, difference here, I want to make sure that I'm also having that same distance here. Now, I know a lot of people like the wider um, showing. So like, here, let me grab one. That's a, so some people like it like this. I like it like this on this project. And the reason is because you couldn't see much of the designer series paper. If you cut your mat at one and three fourths, you are cutting your designer series paper down to one and a half by one and a half. That's not much paper. When you're taking off a whole half inch off of this and a half inch this way, it's pretty small. And I wanted to showcase that um, this designer series paper because it's so pretty. This is the plaid tidings and this is also on our sale this month for 15% off. So I always turn my projects. That's just the way I line things up. So I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna make sure that the amount of orange that you see here, here and here are going to be the same. I'm gonna show you a little trick. If you line that up so that they are all the same, like this, put your finger here, you get it lined up, put your finger here and drop it. And it's going to be perfectly lined up. So when you're doing a big card like that, if you put, I'm gonna say this is a card, and this is my piece that goes on the front, whatever. And you do that, you take it here and you have the same distance here, here, and here. Put your finger here and drop your paper. It's going to be perfectly lined up. And it's just, it's so much nicer to get everything lined up because if you don't know me, I have OCD. <laughs> so everything has to be lined up perfectly. Let me cut. Um, watching from Michigan. Hi, Debbie. Thank you for sharing. Hi, Patty. I'm not sure where she is, will not open. I'm not sure what's not opening. If you're talking, Patty, if you're talking about the live won't open, refresh your page and it might. And if it doesn't do it, try a different browser. Try, um, if you're on Google, go to Face um, Firefox or Explorer or something like that. Um, excuse me, or Safari, I mean. Explorer wasn't that old. That was a long time ago. Um, so try that, but if refreshing your page should bring it up so that you can see me. Okay, I double check here. Alrighty. Okay, so we got the first one on. That's, that's this cube here. So we wanna put this one on and that's gonna be, again, I just use the autumn. On this one, I use the autumn punch pack. That is crushed curry. This is early espresso, and this is from the gathered leaves dyes, and that is made in crushed curry. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put that one on. And by doing it this way, guess what, guys? It makes it easier to, to line them up so that when they're laying flat like this, guess what? Everything is lined up. So much nicer. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this one on. Same thing, I'm gonna hold it here, drop it, and it's gonna line up. Okay. So that's all that we have on the outside of the cube. Now, see, we have these two pieces here on the inside. So let's flip our paper over. Now, remember, this is our front, right? So this is our front. Our cube's going to go like this. So we need to put our paper right here. These two squares right here are what we're going to work on, these two. So again and i did this a lot when i first did this one i was constantly going well okay now where am i working how am i going to do this so we want to do so you got that on your front flip it over now this time your tab is on your left hand side and we're going to take two of these and we're going to put these on the inside and that's going to be the inside of our box so you're not going to see it 
or well, you'll see it, but it will make it look more finished. Oops, I got again, I got to turn because I work on my stuff sideways. Okay. Whoops. Okay. And there. So now when I put it together, voila. There you go. How cool is that? Now, I'm not going to put this together quite yet. I want to do my other cubes first. So now I'm going to bring in my next cube. Remember our square? So that is going to go towards our back. That has to line up here. So what we're going to do is it's going to look like this. So now we're going to work on this and we're going to work on this. So we want to do. So this is our top. So when we're sitting up, it's right here. So we're going to decorate that one. So lay it flat. Your tab is at the top. So your tab's up here. We're going to lay it here. Oh, I, doo -doo -doo. Okay. So we want to do this square. No, nope, hold on a minute. Let me think of that. Nope. Nope. We want to do this one. So this one that has no decoration on it is going to go right next to your X. So go ahead and put tape on that one and that's going to go right here again I'm doing the same thing I'm doing the same so it all lines up now this one's going to go here on the bottom because this is actually going to be the front doesn't that sound weird the bottom piece is the front piece we don't usually do it like that but it actually works real well okay so let's do our next piece. We're gonna do the exact same thing again on our next piece. Now, what I like to do, because when you fold this up, you're gonna fold it like this to put in the envelope. It's gonna go in a standard envelope, which is wonderful. But when you set it up, I still want mine to be level. So what I do is I lay mine right next to each other. And this also helps me say, oh, wait a minute, I gotta put a plain one there. Okay, I can do that. So we're going to put that one there. And see what I'm doing? I'm also making sure these line up together this way also. Okay, then I'm going to do my front one. Okay, so they are all lined up. Now though, wait a minute, there's some inside. there. I put them on the back here. I don't know if you can see it. I put it on the, let's see if I hold it this way. So I put it here and I put it here, but guess what? We don't wanna put this one in quite yet, but we can put this bottom one in. Oh, wait a minute, how do we figure that out? Okay, remember, do your fold it. So you can see, okay, this is the front. So we wanna put it here. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna flip them, but this time you want your tab at the bottom. So flip them, tab at the bottom. Now you're gonna put two of them on the bottom. And this is going to dress up the bottom part so that people um, don't see just the orange. It gives it a little bit more color. And we don't have to worry about the tab because remember, we're not gonna see it when we put it. Um, oops, let me line this up again. There we go. Looks good, okay. Alrighty, so, but like I said, we don't wanna do those two quite yet because there's a reason why. And the reason is, and I found that this was easier, again, to do it this way before we put it together. Okay, so here we have it together. I wish you could see it my angle this way so you can see. Okay, so we, see we have our happy birthday here, but something has to hold this up. So if I flip this, you can see I have a piece of paper right here that is actually adhered to this part 
here too. So this time though, I'm sending this to my mom and she hasn't been feeling well lately. So I wanted to send her one that said, hope you're feeling better. So mine is a little bit smaller. This one for the happy birthday is cut at, um, this is the white is five eighths by two and a quarter. The early espresso is three fourths by two and three eighths. Now this one's, like I said, smaller. So I'm gonna make my pieces smaller. But what you wanna do is, oh, I don't remember what size these were. I will write them on my blog. I'm going to go in tonight and add this video and I'll add all these measurements on my blog post. So it'll be updated um, so that you can have all the measurements for this too. So don't worry about writing everything down. I will go on there tonight and put it on. Okay, so it's gonna go like this is how we're gonna have it. But we need to put this on, I mean, make sure I'm doing this correctly. We wanna make sure we want it to come out. Oh, da, 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 da. I remember doing this earlier, I'm like, okay, I gotta remember how I did this. We want it to come out like, no, no, that's, oh because we want, our banner's gonna go like this. So we need to, let me think this through here. We need to actually adhere this to this piece. I believe, no, that's, hold on, let me think this through again. <laughs> I knew when I got to this point, I'd be going, okay, how did I do that one again? All right, so we're going to, this piece is going to fit like this. And this piece is going to go like this. And we need to get this little piece in here so that it will hold up our banner. Okay, why am I not thinking this through right today? Oh, because it goes on like that, and this one goes on like this. Yes, that's how we do it. But we're actually going to put it on this piece. And I know we put it on our small one. I'm just trying to make sure I remember how I did this so I get it on there correctly. I want it to, I don't know why I'm having a difficult time thinking this through here. Because if I put it on like this, there we go. That's how I want it because I'm going to put this here and then I'm gonna put this on top of it, and my piece, this is gonna go right here. There we go, I knew I did it somehow. Okay, so what we wanna do though, is we wanna make sure you have the correct one. So this one actually is gonna go on this side. So I need this one for this side. Okay, so this is our front, these are our fronts. Sorry about that, ladies. <laughs> Trying to remember, I wanted to make sure I did this right because once we do this, we gotta make sure we're putting it on here right. So we're gonna put it on here like this because then it's gonna be at an angle and it's gonna hold our piece right here. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna put a little piece here and this is where, again, you want to line it up. I'm gonna put it in the middle Like that. So now I'm gonna bring in my other piece. Yep, that's gonna go on that side. Bring in my other piece here. Oops. And I need to put tape on this side of it. And we're only gonna do this side right this second. Okay, so now we can come in and we can put these on top of it and it's gonna hide that. So we'll put these on top and then when we go to put this together, it's gonna to be like this 
And see, this will hold our sign up, these two will. But first, let's get these put on. Take a quick second here. All righty. Whoops. Just checking comments here. Okay. So we're going to do this, and that's going to cover it. Now, the last time I did orange to match this, but I was actually thinking I'm going to do brown because the orange, if someone looks at it, they can see that orange right there. It's kind of bright. Well, I did the brown this time so that they can't, It'll blend right in with this, and it will blend in with that, so they won't see it. I'm just turning this so it's easier for me to stick on here. You do whichever way is easiest for you. Okay, so now we can go and put our boxes together. Because we're not going to put these on, this is the last thing we do. But so let's go ahead and put our big box together first. So we want to put tape on this section right here. So I need, because I don't want to get anything on my mat here, I'm using my silicone craft sheet. And this actually pretty much fills that. You could do two down. I'm doing two this time. And it, see how I went over a little bit? I don't know if you can see that in the, let me see, in the camera. Just take it and push it back on itself. That's all you have to do if you go over a little bit. Okay, so then because this is a square, you know, it's the same um, size, all four panels are, you could lay this flat like this, then bring this over, and it will lay flat on there. And voila, you have your front top box. That's this portion right here. You have it. Voila! Woohoo! Got that part done. Okay, now... I'm going to flatten this, and the reason is because I need to put, I didn't put my X here. I need to put adhesive on here so that I can stick these to it. So I'm gonna do this now because it's a lot easier to put it on when it's flat like this than when it's standing up. That is one thing I definitely learned doing my first box. There were some tricks that I learned doing this. Um, I am putting quite a bit on just because you move it a lot and people are going to play with it and say, oh my gosh, this is so cool and keep opening it. So I'm putting a little more adhesive on and set that off to the side, but make sure you don't put anything on it because you have adhesive on that. Okay, so now we're going to go and we're going to do this box. But before we do that, because I, this, I want this flat, it will be easier. I'm going to go ahead Flatten this like this and put my adhesive on here now. So that way I don't have to worry about it. And since I'm here, I can put my adhesive on this. Again, I'll turn it in, any piece that went over. And we're going to make our box. Again, this is flat. Just bring it in, close it, and you have your box. And voila. But be careful. Remember, you have adhesive on that because that is going to hold our sign. And you know what? I think I put the adhesive on the wrong side. I did. Okay, I did. And that's going to stick. So what do you do? Okay, number one, two things you can do here. Sometimes you can take your finger like this and you can rub it. They sell these erasers. Um, Stampin' Up! used to sell them, but I got you can get them off Amazon. I believe they also have them at like Michael's or Joann's or Hobby Lobby. And I'm just using my eraser and taking it off because I put it on the wrong side. Okay, because now that our box is here, this is what's going to be, okay, that goes on this side. We'll put this one on like this. That's the back. No, I had, I had it right. Oh, goodness, Joyce. I did. I had it right. I was thinking, oh, no, but so, okay. So that's what you do if you put it on the wrong side. <laughs> but I had it on the right side. Let me double check. Make sure I'm doing this right. Because it's going to go like this, and it's going to hold it up like that. 
Yep, I did. I had it on the right side. So we'll just flatten this and we'll just do it again. I just wanted to show you what to do if you messed it up. Oh my gosh, I did a Facebook Live the other day. Um, oh, it was my Christmas card class. I was showing them how to fix everything because if I made could do something wrong on a card, I did it that day. I'm like, I really know what I'm doing. Okay, so this one, we're going to do the same thing. And yes, I'm going to put it on. <laughs> Let me double check before I do it again. I want it on this side, yes, because it's going to go flat. Okay, so we want it on this side. So where you put your X, that's the side you want your tape. Okay. All right, so see what this tape is really strong. So what it did was it took off the top layer. It's not going to matter. It's still going to work, but you go the other direction, and it won't tear it. Uh, and of course, I say that, and it tears it. So what I'm going to do is we're going to use some liquid glue on that one. Like I said, this tape is really strong, so I will just use liquid glue when it comes time to put that one on. Okay, so let's go ahead and put it on here. And we're going to bring it around. And we're going to put it like this. Oops, flatten it. And there you go. Okay, I oh, there is a little bit of tape on there. Oh, and I just tore it off. So that piece definitely does not want to stay on there, does it? And actually, I have tore off quite a bit. So what I'm going to do, and I'll show you what to do. We, I don't need it on the inside, really. I just need it on this piece. So what I'm going to do is get my ruler out, and I am going to quick go grab a tiny piece of early espresso paper. And we're going to make just that section. I'm just going to put a little bit more um, paper on that, just because I want that to make sure that is stronger. Oh, perfect. So I'm actually going to put the tape on this end. I don't need it quite this big. Just cut it. And I'm going to put this, and I'm going to line it up the same as this. They actually happen to be the same size. How cool is that? What are the chances of that? And then I can just come over here and trim that. And that is just going to make that strong. There. And that's how you would fix that if that happens to you. I know I just cut a little piece off, but I'm not sure where it went. Probably on the floor. Okay, so now that's how I made that stronger. And let's see here. We need to put glue on this side. So let's try it again. Let's hope it sticks, the glue stick. There we go, yay, we did it. Okay, but now we need, bring in the piece that already has the tape on it, and we're gonna bring it in, and we're gonna put that on right here. And you're going to line this up. What you wanna do is you wanna line up your side and your bottom, but make sure that you're not going over this part because we need to, um, or what do I wanna say? We need to adhere this on there. But you know what I'm going to do? And I remembered this last time because it was hard to get in there to put tape on this section. But I think I'll use liquid glue today because this piece is really little. So we're gonna use liquid glue. So let's go ahead and get this piece on here. And like I said, what I'm doing is I'm gonna line up this and this. And because we're using really strong adhesive, be very careful that you're just gently setting it on there until you know that is exactly where you want it because it is going to be harder. Not, I'm not saying it's impossible. It will just be harder to um, adjust where you want it. Now, some people might want to use liquid glue on that part. So we have one side done. How cute is that? Woohoo! Woohoo! Now, when we go to do this, I'm going to kind of hold this in because remember, we got tape on it. So we're going to do this piece because we don't want our two pieces touching each other. So I'm going to bring this in and I'm holding it down with my hand through here. I'm going to hold it down and I'm going to put this one on. I'm actually going to turn this so I can do this with my, I think this might work better doing it this direction. 
Nope. I need to use my right hand. I'm right-handed, so I need to use my right hand for this. Okay, I want to make sure I'm in with this. Okay. It's This is a little bit harder because I'm trying to do this. So you don't get my... My head is not in the way for you to see me doing this. Okay, that's lined up. Looks good. Before I press it down, looks great. Okay, we just need to make sure our two little pieces are not connected. Nope, they're not. Good. Okay, so push that down real good. All right, so look, you made your little box. How cute is that? Now, you can make it go like this to put on your little pieces. Oh, mine aren't too lined up, are they? All right. So now you're going to take this and you're going to put this on here like that. But I'm going to show you an easier way. Put this on your the bottom and you're going to set this on top of that. Now again, like I said, I always do mine sideways. And you're trying to center this is what you're going to do. And see, mine are a little off, but it doesn't matter because I cut those pieces smaller than I did the back, my mat of my sentiment. Okay, then you open it up and voila, there's your box. I'm gonna hold it up so you can see it. See, and it says, hope you are feeling better. And then you can write on the back here if you want, or you could put a little note in it, whatever you want. But how cute is that? And it's really not hard to make. I tell, I think I take more time, um, I took more, definitely more time coloring it and designing my squares than I did making this whole thing. And, and there are a lot of cutting, but when you're doing it, you know, you're doing a lot at a time, it really is not hard. But isn't that a fun card? Okay, let's see here. All righty. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna show you now a little bit of coloring, just so that you can see how I colored the um, pumpkins. I'm just going to do a big pumpkin for you. And one thing I have learned, like when I need just a little piece of paper underneath my um, project, I don't need a whole big grid paper. I love this Stampin' Rattus grid paper. It's perfect for this. Now remember, when you're using blends, it will go through your paper. So always put something underneath it. And I really don't want anything on my mat. So I'm actually going to put my silicone craft sheet under that too. Okay, so, on, and I'm only going to cut the, I did two in case I messed up. I had another one. So, what I'm going to do is I just use the normal um, early espresso marker to do the stem. This is with the Stampin' Right markers. Now, if you notice, this pumpkin, let me do it like this way. This pumpkin's a little bit darker than this pumpkin, just because I wanted some variation. I think you might be able to see it a little better on this one, I guess they are pretty close when I do it that way. But what I wanna do is, I want to, this one, especially this real light ones here and the light ones on here, I only used pumpkin pie on those. The ones that are darker, I also used light Cajun craze. So I'm going to show you the darker ones so you can see how I did the shadowing and everything. So I started with my Cajun craze. And we're going to work on this one right here. So let me move this one out of the way. Make sure you guys can see it. Nope, I'm too far up. Let me bring it back down. Okay, so you guys can see. There we go. Okay, so we're going to work on this little guy right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm taking my Cajun Craze Light, and I'm taking the brush part. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow the lines that Stampin' Up! has given us in our and the um, stamp, and I'm gonna bring it down and I am lightly, lightly just tracing these lines a little bit because that's gonna give us a little bit of definition. And then, and I'm not hitting all of it, and then I do a little bit on the bottom. Okay, and that's all I do for the Cajun Craze for now. So now I'm gonna take my pumpkin pie light and I'm gonna bring it in here. And I like to use my light first because this is going to give me a great base. 
Um, this just is how I like to do it. So I'm gonna, what I'm doing now is I'm going in and I'm blending the um, two together, the um, Cajun Craze and the light paper pumpkin. And when I'm going through this section, I'm not pressing as hard because I want a little bit of light in that so it looks like the light is hitting it. Hope, let me move it down a little bit more. You know, I'm not sure why my camera is so far down today. Let's see here. Let's move this up a little bit. There we go. Let's see if that works. Let me bring that back in there. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead. And again, this is easier to do if you do your blending as soon, you know, just like now, like don't let it sit here. You can blend it if you do that, but it is a lot harder to do it unless it's easiest just to keep doing it while there's the, um, the markers are, you know, the ink is still pretty wet. Okay, now I'm just going in and I'm doing another coat on here. But I'm leaving this section. I'm not doing that section. I'm just doing the two outer ones. Okay, so now I'm going to come in with a darker pumpkin. And again, I'm using my brush. And I'm just going to take it and I'm going to just fling it. I'm literally taking it and flipping it up. Because I don't want this darker all the way around. I just want it on the edges. And again, I'm going to go around the side just a little bit. Same thing. I'm flicking it. Okay. So now I'm going to come back in again with my light. And I'm going to blend. Especially these two sides right here. I'll do my blending. I'll do the bottom, but I'm not going all the way up because I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with that here in a minute. Get these blended. Again, just keep that center open. I know it doesn't look right right now, but just I will show you what you do. Okay, so I like the color of that. And of course, we don't like that middle right now. That's blech. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the end, the brush end of the light paper pumpkin, and you're going to take it and you're going to flick it because that's going to get rid of your harsh lines there and you just flick it. But remember, you don't want to do too much because you don't want to get it to get dark. And right now I am barely, barely touching it. I'm just trying to get, I have this one section right here that's pretty um, sharp and I'm trying to blend it. So I am, like I said, I am barely touching this. It's almost like a feather touching it. That's how light I'm going. Okay, so I like how that turned out. Let me bring it up. And that is how I do my pumpkins personally. That's how I do it. And if you want it darker, this one's a little bit darker. Come back in with the, um, let's do, a, I'll show you. We'll make it a little bit darker. Come back in with your Cajun Craze. And bring in some more color and just fling it. You want to make sure in this stage you're flinging it. Because you want, you don't want a real harsh line. You just want a little bit, and then you're going to come back in again with your light. Blend with your light. You're just going to blend it in. And see how that made that darker? But again, I'm not putting a whole lot on it. And even going over it with the light again, it's making it darker. Because remember, you can always add color, but it's really hard to take it away. So you'd, again, I want to fling it because I was getting harsh lines right there. And there you go. And that is how I made it darker. And you can just play around with your colors all you want. So here is this one. That's a happy birthday one. And this is the one we made tonight. I hope you feel better. And like I said, when you go to put them in, the in your um, envelope, you're going to flatten them like this. But I'll flatten it like this so you can see. And this is what we made tonight. And I'll stick that in the middle so you can see. Well, thank you guys for joining me today. I really appreciate it. If you could please share this, I would love that. Um, again, bring it down. I don't know what I'm having issues with this tonight. I am way too high, aren't I? Okay, I think I'm down now, but it will go up like this. I hope you guys were able to see all of that. I apologize if it was up. Because according to my thing, it's down far enough. That is so weird. You know what? I didn't have my screen down on my on my 
computer. <laughs> I only had half of the screen. Oh my goodness. But there you go, ladies. And I hope you guys have a great night. Thank you for joining me. And there you go. Bye-bye. Love you. Bye-bye.